The series kicks off with two men desperately fleeing from a group of menacing women on horseback. As the men attempt to escape through a narrow mountain pass, the leader causes an avalanche using her magic, narrowly missing the two men. The man pleads with the women not to hurt his partner, claiming that it's not his fault. However, the women insist that there is no one else present. It turns out that one of the men has somehow tapped into a forbidden source of magical power, meant only for women, contaminating it in the process. The women surround him and strips him of his powers, however, it becomes clear he was not the one they are looking for. Moraine, the powerful Aes Sedai, and her warder, Lon, are on a quest searching for the reincarnation of the dragon, a prophecy that predicts this person will save the world or destroy it. They arrive at a local hotel, where Moraine takes a relaxing bath in preparation of what's to come. Later, they both take walks in the village, with Moraine attempting to make contact with a young woman named Nynaeve. She tries to figure out if Nynaeve is the dragon asking her a series of questions. Meanwhile, Lon stumbles across a gruesome scene of 13 slaughtered lambs arranged to form the number 9. As a part of the recruitment into the woman's circle, Egwene is pushed into a raging river but manages to survive by letting the river guide her, as the woman whispering in her ear suggests. Rand, who is motherless and raised by his father, helps Egwene and later learns that she is to be trained in some mysterious aspect of power. However, their budding romance is put on hold as they must go their separate ways. The Feast of Lights is a festive celebration marking the end of the year, where people hang lights in front of their homes to guide the souls of their departed loved ones back to the world. However, tragedy strikes as Trollocs, monstrous creatures serving the Dark One, invade the village of two rivers, searching for the dragon reborn. Moraine and Lon intervene, using their magical powers and combat skills to defend the villagers. Perrin and his wife fend off the Trollocs, but in efforts to protect her, he accidentally wield his weapon, killing her. Nynaeve is abducted by a Trolloc, and Egwene is mortally wounded while trying to save a neighbor. Matt searches for his sisters, while Rand and his father fend off Trollocs at their home. Rand's father is injured in the process, but Moraine's magic saves them all, taking out the Trollocs. Realizing that the Trollocs will return in greater numbers the next day, Moraine takes Rand, Matt, Perrin and Egwene with her. Determined to find out which of them is the prophesized dragon reborn and to lead the Trollocs away from the two rivers. Next, we're introduced to a ruthless captain who has captured and tortured an Aes Sedai. He revels in her suffering and takes her ring as a trophy, revealing a history of violence against Aes Sedai. Meanwhile, Moiraine and the others are being hunted by Trollocs when they encounter a river that the Trollocs fear. They encounter a ferryman who helps them cross, but when the Trollocs arrive, they realize the water is too deep for the creatures to follow. Lon cuts the rope, causing the ferryman's death to protect their escape. As they rest, Moraine questions Egwene her about dreams and their shared experiences. The group debates the likelihood of returning home, and Moraine hints at the importance of their dreams. Dreams have power. More than you know. What they continue their journey but encounter a group called the Children of the Light, who hunt those associated with magic. Luckily, they manage to deceive the group and continue. During their travels, they grow increasingly suspicious of Moraine's intentions. However, when they are attacked by Trollocs again and with Moraine unconscious, they are forced to seek refuge in the fallen city known as Shadar Lagoth. Here, they unwittingly disturb an ancient artifact, setting off a series of events that release a malevolent shadow that chases and disintegrates them. Matt and Rand manage to escape through a window, while Perrin and Egwene are forced to leap from the city walls. Lon, blinded by his love for Moraine, escapes with her on horseback. However, he is confronted by Nynaeve, revealing that she survived the attack. If you don't take me to them right now, I'll slit your throat. A flashback shows Nynaeve taking the opportunity to escape. She remains submerged in the water to avoid being seen, but the Trolloc unexpectedly enters the pool and Nynaeve resurfaces, grabs the Trolloc's blade, and fatally stabs him. In the present, despite Nynaeve's threats and bravado, Lon disarms her, knocks her unconscious, and ties her to a tree. Eventually, Nynaeve convinces Lon to untie her by revealing her knowledge of plants that can cure the Trolloc poison that Moraine has contracted. Together, they tend to Moraine's wound and wait for her recovery. Meanwhile, Perrin and Egwene are on their own journey. They struggle to make a fire to keep warm until Egwene demonstrates her ability to ignite a fire with her hands. The pair debates whether to return home but ultimately decides to head to the White Tower in hopes to reunite with the others. 
they encounter a pack of wolves, but these creatures inexplicably stop and allow them to continue on their way. The wolves continue to shadow them, becoming their protectors. The pair enters a foggy forest where they encounter the traveling people, who they found unsettling but had no choice but to join them. Rand and Matt contemplate returning home but remember that the Trollocs will continue to follow them there. They decide to head to the White Tower. In a nearby town, they learn a costly lesson about trust when Matt's patch of coins is stolen by a seemingly humble musician. To earn money, they chop wood and serve beer for a woman named Dana, who owns the establishment. Afterward, Matt encounters the same musician who previously robbed him but is surprised when he offers his hand in friendship. They learn that Tom has a deeper past and share their journey with him. As they settle in, Rand connects with Dana, however, she reveals herself to be part of a dark order and admits that she has been dreaming of all five of them. Rand manages to escape her grasp, encounters Matt, and they are joined by Tom Marilyn, who intervenes and takes Dana down. Where are you going? East. And fast. Are you coming? Meanwhile, Moraine, Lon, and Nynaeve head southwest toward the AES Sedai for shelter when they encounter a man claiming to be the reincarnation of the dragon. In a flashback, Loghain, the man who claims to be the Dragon Reborn, is in pursuit of the king. A confrontation ensues, with Loghain displaying a strange power that envelopes him. Despite the king's attempts to attack Loghain, he is subdued by the mysterious power. He eventually spares the king's life, stating that there is a place for even his enemies by his side. Back in the present, Moraine learns that women cannot see the weaves of air created by male channelers like Loghain, and discovers that almost every member of the AES Sedai is using their considerable powers to keep him contained. She begins to suspect that he might be a false dragon, not the true dragon reborn. However, her doubts grow as she witnesses the extent of Loghain's powers. Rand and Matt continue their journey with Tom. Matt's condition worsens, and Tom suggests that Matt might be going mad, posing a danger to their group. When Rand falls asleep, he has a nightmare of his group of friends back in two rivers, with Perrin taking an axe to a pile of dead bodies. When he awakes, he finds Matt gone. Rand and Tom search for him and discover a gruesome scene at a farmhouse, where Matt is found holding a dagger. They are attacked by Shadow Spawn, and Tom advises them to flee. Egwene and Perrin continue traveling with the traveling people, even though Perrin does not trust them. They learn that the group are searching for a song that once brought harmony to the world. The traveling people practice a way of life that involves yielding to the wheels while and leaving the group at the age of 20 to explore the world. While Moraine interrogates Loghain, his army, led by the King of Gildan and accompanied by their warders and AES Sedai, including Alana, attacks the camp. As they attempt to make it back to the caves, Lyandrin and Corrine are overtaken by Loghain's powers. Just then, Lyandrin and Corrine awake, and the three AES Sedai snap to attention and hold on to Loghain with a force guild. That's until he sends a weave of his own that is about to kill all three, but Corrine shields her two sisters but is killed almost instantly. A confrontation between Loghain and the AES Sedai ensues, injuring them all. Moraine is stabbed, Lyandrin's is badly injured, and Lon is neck has been cut open, and he is bleeding out. Nynaeve desperately tries to hold the blood in when she suddenly screams with rage and lets out a weave that heals everyone. <laughs> Lyandrin has the AES Sedai link and strips Loghain of his dark energy. After that brutal attack and laying the fallen to rest, the group heads to the White City. Nynaeve receives a warning from Moraine about the politics within the AES Sedai Tower and the importance of being cautious with her newfound powers. Despite the warning, Nynaeve disregards the advice. She is then called to reunite with Rand, where they find Matt's condition worsening due to the effects of the Red Dagger and his involvement with the Dark Order. He remains tormented by the possibility that he harmed the family they encountered earlier. Egwene and Perrin are still traveling with the traveling people. They encounter a group from the Children of the Light who accuse them of being associated with the False Dragon. Despite the group's peaceful beliefs, they are attacked by the Children of the Light, who capture Egwene and Perrin. Aemon Valder, a member of the Children of the Light, interrogates Aegwean and Perrin. He threatens to harm them unless they admit to being Aes Sedai and channeling the One Power. In a desperate moment, Aegwean discovers her ability to channel and uses it to create a small flame. Valder is about to attack when Perrin turns, and he breaks free, revealing his connection with wolves. 
they hear wolves outside that attacks and kills the Children of the Light, Valder is then killed by Egwene. Lyandon squares off with Moraine, telling her that she needs to step aside to mentor Nynaeve. Loghain, the captured false dragon, points out that the Aes Sedai are losing their grip on power and respect. Loghain may have been defeated, but he believes his actions will inspire other revolutionaries. Lyandrin, a member of the Red Aja, is secretly working to undermine Moraine and the Emerlin Sea. She confronts Moraine with knowledge about her traveling companions, particularly that they all come from the same small village. In response, Moraine hints at knowledge of Lyandrin's own secrets, causing tension between them. Moraine is unable to stay in the tower because of her mission to find and protect the Dragon Reborn, who she believes could be one of the five young individuals she is currently guiding. It is revealed that Moraine and Suin Sanche are secret lovers, united in their quest to find the Dragon Reborn. They discuss prophecies and the importance of defeating the Dark One, who is believed to be gathering strength in its prison, the Eye of the World. As a result of a deal with Suin, Moraine is exiled from the White Tower, allowing her to continue her search for the Dragon Reborn. She reunites with Egwene and Perrin, and they are summoned to Suin's chambers. Suin reveals that Nynaeve is an exceptionally powerful channeler and that the Wheel has called them all to a significant purpose, the upcoming battle against the Dark One. The group also learns of Matt's deteriorating condition due to the dagger. Moraine successfully removes the darkness from Matt, but is still concerned about his strength and the dagger's corrupting influence. The group, now including Loyal, an ogre, prepares to enter the ways, ancient pathways that allow for fast travel. Moraine explains that they are headed to the Eye of the World, where one of them will fulfill a crucial role, but they won't know who until they arrive. As they enter the ways, Matt makes a decision to stay behind, and the door closes, leaving him alone in Tar Valen. Moraine then explains that she can't retrieve Matt, because there is a darkness within him. If he's the prophesied one, she cannot risk letting him near the Dark One. Meanwhile, the scholarly loyal informs the group that their powers can be used within the ways, but they must be cautious as their weaves can be turned against them by the Black Wind. The group faces a Trolloc attack just as Rand and Egwene are beginning to share a moment. The ways prove to be treacherous for the group, particularly for Nynaeve, who struggles to control her powers. They are cornered by the Black Wind, which torments them with their worst fears. Nynaeve creates a shield, buying them time for Moraine to open an escape door, leading them closer to the Blight and the Eye of the World. <laughs> Upon arriving at Faldara, they meet Lady Amelisa Jagged, who requests their help in sending word to Lyandrin about Matt staying behind. She also warns Lord Agelmar, the ruler of Faldara, that the Dark One is using the ways to move his Trolloc army. Moraine's consults a local seer for information about the group. The seer reveals that Rand carries a baby, Perrin has the eye of the wolf, and Moraine's own future seems bleak. She admits to her group that that they will likely face their deaths on the morrow, but it is a necessary sacrifice. The group debate the morality of their impending journey. Meanwhile, Nynaeve follows Lon into town, interrupting his dinner and sparking a romance that has been brewing since they first met. Rand and Egwene, on the other hand, discuss their future plans. Egwene contemplates studying at the White Tower, and Rand proposes becoming her warder. Rand's dreams reveals his true identity as the Dragon Reborn. He learns from the seer that he was born as a baby during a harrowing battle, and his mother died shortly after giving birth. He tells Moraine, disclosing his true identity as the Dragon Reborn. He joins the others in their journey to save their friends, embarking on a perilous trek through the Blight, a sinister forest filled with ominous dead trees. All leading them toward the eye of the world. Rand has a disturbing nightmare where the enigmatic figure from his dreams taunts him. I wouldn't have expected it would be you. He manages to wake himself from the nightmare by injuring himself. Rand questions Moraine about his ability to wield the One Power, but she fears the madness it might bring. She provides him with a S.A. Angreel, an artifact that will boost his power when he learns to channel. In Faldara, Egwene, Perrin, Lon, and Nynaeve grapple with the sudden departure of Rand and Moraine. As an army of Trollocs and Fates approaches, Lord Agelmar prepares for battle. Lady Amelisa, however, is determined to defend the city. The battle unfolds, and the women, including Egwene and Nynaeve, 
use the one power to hold back the Trollocs. Their combined strength proves overwhelming, leading to tragic consequences. Nynaeve sacrifices herself to absorb the excess power, and her survival astonishes Egwene. Meanwhile, Rand and Moraine reach the Eye of the World, a mysterious chamber with a profound connection to the One Power. Rand touches a symbol and experiences a vision of a peaceful life in two rivers with Egwene. However, the Dark One's emissary severs Moraine from the One Power, leading to a standoff. Rand is tempted by the power to shape the world as he desires, but ultimately rejects the Dark One due to his love for Egwene. He channels the One Power through the Essayangreel and banishes the Dark One back into his prison. In the castle, Perrin and Loyal unearth the Horn of Valir, a powerful artifact. Paid in Fane and Fade's attack, leaving Perrin as the sole survivor, bearing witness to Fane's revelation that this is just the beginning. Tell them I died here. Where will you go? Goodbye, Moraine. Moraine and Lon are left to contemplate the Quendler, a mysterious artifact, and its implications for the future. The season concludes with a glimpse of the Shan Shan army, mysterious channelers in ominous uniforms, and a looming threat on the horizon. Let us know what you're most excited to see in Season 2.